After having Johnny healed up, he and Roy leave town to find the fugitives allegedly hiding in the mountain caves near Burton. On the way up the mountain, Winnie slips and breaks a leg, leaving Roy no other option but to put her down. A tearful Roy reaches the caves and after being attacked by an angry cat, they stumble around in the dark, exploring. Eventually, he finds a cavern in which his two fugitives were hiding. Roy tries to talk them into coming in peacefully, but fails, resulting in Roy getting a crossbow bolt in the gut and bleeding out in front of a tearful Johnny. At least Roy and Winnie are together now. See you, cowboy. Who is up next? Will they start with evil in their heart, or will it slowly blossom? Will they be more beloved than Roy? Let's find out now on Dicing with Death. Hey everybody and welcome to Dicing with Death. Ryan, how are you doing today? I am doing well. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Are you ready for our kobold cleric of Martha today? I am. It's going to be special. Yes. I well, as ready as one could ever be. I don't. Right. I don't think any of us are prepared for uh, what's about to go down. Um, but before we hop into that, how's your week been? Uh, two weeks been. Yeah, it's been a little while. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah, I don't know. Trying along. We had a snow day on Monday. Ooh. That was a little disorienting. Is this your first snow day up there? Um, actually, yeah, the first time I think that I've ever they ever canceled classes. It wasn't like a real snow day, and wasn't I, the afternoon. I mean, I, yeah, I still went into work. Oh, <laughs> classes, and, classes and stuff got canceled, and uh, hmm. uh, I didn't realize it snowed in Seattle itself ever. It does usually a couple times a year. Sure. And we just don't know how to handle it. They don't really have the infrastructure to plow the roads. And there's too many hills. So like icy roads get bad. So usually, every, yeah, a lot of times those winter storm videos that are kind of winter weather videos that they'll show on Weather Channel with mm -hmm. like cars skidding down the hill one after another in <laughs> comedic fashion. A lot of those come out of Seattle. Ah. All right. Well, um, my week's been pretty boring. Just lots of amazing Dungeons and Dragons, so I guess it's not been boring, but it's been good. Amazing Dungeons and Dragons. That's, good that's shit's been happening. Boring. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. uh, yeah, but you'd have to watch the episodes to find out. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah, I'll keep it quiet. Um, so let's talk new campaign. Would you like yes. to introduce Mama Beatrix to us? You just did. Yes, I'm playing Mama Beatrix, the matriarch of the Moon Moon Clan. Come on! What is your tribe's name? Your pack's name? I don't know. Moon Moon seems seems good to me. Moon Middle Mother Fertility. We'll see. You can you can you can propose an alternative. Um, yes, I am a yes wizened kobold cleric of okay. of Martha. I I don't know that the kobolds call her Martha. Maybe some. Mata yeah. or Mata. Mata. Mama. 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 Something along those lines. The fertility goddess, among yes, other things. She is. Um, so let's talk a little bit about kobolds. Because um, this is going to be a different sort of campaign here. Um, it's not going to be the, our standard adventurers running around. You're going to have a, a pretty straightforward goal here, and that is to increase the kobold numbers and retake the lands that have been kind of you've been kicked out of by goblins and bugbears and a little bit by some ogres or a lot bit by some ogres actually so before we get too far we need to understand how kobolds work um, how do kobolds work did, did kobolds work i, I wasn't aware that... well let's let's just put out some numbers here um Mm -hmm. Kobolds live forty to fifty years. Oh, really? Um, uh, in the books, we're it going says book here. we're going way off <laughs> book. Um, so not only to change my my age. Yeah, definitely we'll change get... your age. Okay. Um, 
They are canine derivatives, so they're closely related to gnolls. They're not lizard-like in the slightest, and they have no association with dragons in any way, shape, or form. They're like little wild dogs that stand on two legs and are, are they, you know... Are they goblinoid? Are they still, no, like... No, 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 they're canonoid. Canonoid? Okay. Yeah. Are they fey creatures? No. Nope. No, not at all. Um... Let's see. They are, as I said, 40, 50 years. Uh, they live to 40 or 50 years, although few ever make it there. Uh, most of them <laughs> die much earlier. The, the time from being born to being a full-grown adult is only 16 months. They grow pretty rapidly. Um, their gestation period, that is how long a kobold pregnancy lasts, is 10 to 11 weeks. So not very long either. Uh, kobolds are born in litters of D6 plus 4, so 5 to 10 kobolds at a time. They're about 3 feet tall and weigh about 40 pounds. So they're the size of a, a medium-sized dog if that dog stood up on hind legs. And a lot of these numbers that we pulled come from dogs, like the gestation period and the time to be full-grown adults. That's the, those are all pulled from medium dog statistics. Uh, they have an infant mortality rate of about 10%. Uh, about 10% don't make it to adulthood for just whatever reason. And then a lot of them just die off very quickly because kobolds are small, weak creatures that are easily crushed. Um, and each kobold has a max of two fertility cycles per year. You might be able to squeeze in a third, but it'd be really stressful in the body. So let's just say a max of two fertility cycles per year. Um, and that's how we're going to... Those are our kobold facts. Okay. So I imagined this character being the matriarch of the of the tribe. So probably one of the older females, and I'm guessing most of the tribe are either my descendants, perhaps a few cousins. And... Um. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, they're probably not mostly your descendants, but there are. You probably have quite a few descendants in here. How how large is the pack? Uh, your pack once upon a time was uh, where would it see was 95 kobold strong at peak yeah. packness. So, you know, that's that's I, the normal traveling I would traveling that pack. to be a family, no? Um, or mostly family? Or a couple maybe. I mean, I guess it's all... Two families that are loosely related? I guess, but when you start having large litters, family starts mm -hmm. to break down a little bit. It becomes... You know, so you, the whole you, pack is the family. But yeah, I the whole pack is the family. Are, most of the pack is related. If cousins, yeah. Cousins yeah, they, they are all, they're all interbred together. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's not so much, you know, you don't so, have such yeah. a strong paternal child relationship once they're once oh, they're yeah. full grown and on their own. They're just like another person. You don't have mm -hmm. that same sort of connectedness. Yeah. I had originally written age forty six, but I'm guessing something more like in the twenties would be appropriate. Tens or twenties. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get some forest background music. And I think I'm a slightly larger than most. I had three foot four. That's fine. That's and great. 65 pounds, but maybe I'm visual. I can't even think what. That's, um, that's a little heavy. That's fine if you want to be. Okay. Average cold no. is 40 pounds and three feet tall. All right, I'll three, four, and 45 pounds. Cool. Um, as I said, there, there used to be 95 kobolds in your pack. But because of this string of incidents that's been going on, your pack is down to 35 kobolds. It's dwindled. Um, if we take a look at the map, everyone. We are over here near the Thistle Forest. Um, that is where your tribe, your pack lives. This whole area that I'm about to outline used to be kobold territory. All of the Thistle Forest down to the hills and then down through Smuggler's Pass and up along the Bramblewood. This whole forested region used to be open kobold terrain that housed uh, 28 different kobold packs. Um, each pack had, you know, roughly 95 kobolds in it, but things have not gone well. Their bugbears have come in and organized the goblins that already lived in the Bramblewood and in Smuggler's Pass. Uh, got the goblins to work underneath them. Not all the goblins, but some of them. This helped to drive out the kobolds. Now, clear territory for the goblins and bugbears. Ogres also are fond of this region. And while they've always been a persistent threat to kobolds, 
the mass migrations of kobolds out of Smuggler's Pass and Bramblewood into the Thistle Forest, as well as their dwindling numbers have made the ogres more of a threat, because all of a sudden there are more kobolds in here, and the ogres just took to bashing you guys on the head. Um, so, all the kobold packs are down. Uh, there's only 19 left instead of 28, and each pack is roughly 42 kobolds strong. Um, I have a list of packs, their populations, and their leaders, but we probably you probably don't know all of those to begin with. Um, at least the, the pack size. Um, what other information do we need to share here? Do, do, do. Um, so as I said, you've got 35 kobolds in your pack. You're capable of feeding about 30 a day um, just from foraging and wildlife hunting and stuff like that. So your pack is kind of in a state of starvation. No one's dying, but everyone's just a little bit hungry, unless you have some sort of spells to prevent people from being hungry. Well, as a level 5 cleric, I will have tons of spells to prevent people from being hungry. Beautiful. Um, so have so do I not know, have I always been a cleric? Have I yeah. born a link to Martha? You were born that way. Okay. So sort of like the, the shaman, the wise woman of the the kobolds, if there is such a thing. Yeah. Um, your connection to Martha has been there, but I think we're going to see it uh, uptick a little bit in the near future. Um, mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us what you look like? Uh, we, we know your height and weight. What color <laughs> fur do you I have? I look like a kobold. Uh Color fur. I didn't know yeah. that there were variations there. Well, I have that I have tangled red, dreaded hair. Okay. I had, I imagine the fur is probably a similar reddish color. Short, straight, pointed horns and red eyes. Um, so wizened and maybe a little hunched. That's probably most kobolds. And I'm clad in wolf furs. Hmm, nice. Which may be a bit of a status symbol. I don't, I don't know that. Most kobolds even wear armor. Uh, let's talk your stats and HP and all that fun stuff. Sure. I have 12 strength, 8 dex, 9 constitution, 13 intelligence, 14 willpower, 13 charisma, and 13 perception. Do you get bonus spells with that willpower? I do. I get two bonus first level spells. Ooh, very nice. And um, you're my eight- fifth level cleric. I am a fifth level cleric, apparently. So you, you guys have been asking for it—a high level campaign. Here it is. <laughs> Here are we waiting for. Um, as is fitting for a kobold, I rolled miserably on my HP. Is that a power outage? You're still there. Yeah, I'm still here, but that—that that was the power flickering. So if everything. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Dyson with Death. Uh, we had a bit of a power outage right there, which you can probably tell from the uh, lack of stream. Hopefully it's the only one. If it continues, I don't know what we'll do, but it'll be exciting. Um, so where were we when the power went out and we all fell into darkness? Um, we were talking about kobolds. My character. Yes. Um, I think we got through the description. We were in the. We we're talking about the thistle forest, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And there's a bunch of monsters that live around there, uh, goblins, bugbears, and ogres. Um, there are also mm-hmm. some giants. If you look just south of the thistle forest and the metallic hills, um, they are home to various giants. Uh, big ones. Big ones, right? Um, they'll sometimes trickle all the way out into Smuggler's Pass, but they, they stick to the hills. They're hill giants, of course. Um, the ogres kind of run over everything, but they're big, and they travel in small packs, and they're pretty easily avoidable because you can hear them coming, and you're so small that you can hide from them pretty easily. Um, we were talking about you, your fur yeah. color. Hey, I think we got through the description. I don't know if we need it again, but we can... Happy to describe myself as as it becomes relevant. Sure, sure. Kobolds do have prehensile tails, is that correct? No, not prehensile. 
Just just tails. Okay. Going off book. Yeah, we're we're going off book pretty hard. Um do do they actually have prehensile tails in the book? Pretty sure they do. That's pretty cool. But you guys are you're Oh no, hold on, hold on. It's non prehensile. Okay. I saw I read prehensile, but there's a non in front of it. Rat like tails. Rat okay. No, this is this is like dog like tails. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um So let's start off the campaign. Um we're gonna start at night. And you are sleeping. Um ours. So, um, Mama Beatrix, the kobold matriarch of her pack, her unnamed pack, is... Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, is, is having a doggy dream. But it's more than... What the hell is this music not starting? <laughs> We'll do something else to set the mood appropriately. <laughs> God, are none of these audio tracks Good. working? No, this one's working. Perfect. Um, there we go. You have a you're having a doggy dream, and in it, you see before you the lovely rounded face of the fertility goddess Martha. Um, or as you guys call her, Mata. Yes. <laughs> um, and she speaks directly to you. Uh, she says, Big Mama Beatrix, at time you meet fate. Little ones, so few, so small. You help make more. You make grow big, grow strong. Worship me. I make you big, boss. I help you help make babies. I make you make pups grow fast. I give you life. You trade life, give pups life. You be biggest, mama. No pups for you. Very sad. No pups? No pups from Mama Beatrix? Hmm. Is there anything you'd like to say back to the goddess? I guess I'd probably say that. No pups for Mama Beatrix. No pups. So sad. But... <laughs> Make other we'll pups. Do this. We'll do. They are all my pups. All yours. Uh all, All yours. ours. <laughs> um, I know safe place, big food, mm. big cave, good water. Bad bads live now. Get mm -hmm. bad bads dead. Make cave home. Make mm. you big, mama. Kill bad bads. Kill but in their death. Bads. More lives, kobold lives, kobold yeah. life best, kobold life best life. <laughs> Where, where's cave? Follow your nose. And, and you wake up with this, this, this scent, the scent in the air. It's, it smells like, smells like deer. I was like dear urine. Delicious. But maybe not delicious, but probably. I mean, you're you're kobold. You like to. You, know, you probably like to roll in stinky things. Well, I don't know. I get up. Where do we currently? Where does our tribe currently reside? Are we just like your nomadic? tribe has been forced into a nomadic lifestyle? 
kobolds tend to prefer having bases of operations, even if it's maybe a couple of bases that they hop between, like prairie dogs or meerkats. Um, but you guys have been forced into a nomadic lifestyle that has been devastating your pack. It's really hard to get to keep the pups alive when you're on the move. You know they can't keep up, and there's just too many to carry, and so some get left behind. And when there's lack of food, the pups starve really easily. So that 10% mortality rate, uh, infant mortality rate, is probably closer to 30% right now. All right. Infant so I scurry out from under my blanket. Um, the pack is all asleep, except for the few that are on watch right now. One of them pops up and scampers over to you and goes, Big Mama! <laughs> Big Mama's got a scent. I know smell. It smells. I give it a big whiff. It's strong. Mm -hmm. It goes through your nose and into your brain. I look around. Come with. And I follow the scent, uh, gesturing probably a couple of the those that are awake to follow, but I leave enough on guard duty. Sure. So you so grab probably... three? Yeah, yeah. Sounds right. reasonable. You grab three. The others remain behind to watch over the pack. Um, the three that are with you, mm -hmm. uh, you know them. Their names yeah. are Pogwick, Sneebel, and <laughs> Snogwad. Okay. Not that it matters, but I, we made a list of like 50 kobold names and they're amazing. All right. so. Should I should I keep track of them or are we just okay. going to... They're, they're probably kobold. just going to die, so... <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> All right. So, following the scent of deer urine, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mama Beatrix leads... It leads you south. Three kobold younglings into the woods. You guys were already in the southern part of the Thistle Woods, the Thistle mm -hmm. Forest. And this just brings you even further south. Um, you follow the scent to a, a creek where, sure enough, you find a deer um, kind of squatting a little bit, urinating into the stream. Um, do I have any guesses? I have an herbalism proficiency. Can I find something nearby that a deer might like to eat? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you can. Yeah, I produce a... Uh, um... But yeah, I, I pick a plant that the, the deer might like and producing my holy symbol, which maybe we should establish what that is. So typically Martha's holy symbol is two interlocked gold rings with mm -hmm. nipples in the middle. There are no nipples in the middle of the ring. Are you sure? Are, <laughs> I am positive there's no... I, I think we should consult the resident Martha expert, <laughs> Friar Morton Bigsby, on this. But anyway, so does... Uh, um, would... It, would uh, would I have like interlocked rings as the holy symbol, or do I just have like some token that's maybe some busty fat kobold with I think six tits? It's a busty fat kobold with six tits. Yeah, okay. definitely. So it's probably a little stone carving. I don't know if I wear it around my neck or have it in like a pouch. Yeah, it could be in a pocket. It could be around your neck. It's probably tied in a pouch around my neck. Let's okay. say that. Oh, that that works real well. All right. So I pull this out, massaging the bosom bosom of the of the big mama mm -hmm. and approach the deer with uh, a piece with some kind of leaf that it might eat and cast animal friendship. Ooh. I was prepared to cast that on my goat, but goat, goat is not my friend. Goat is tied <laughs> to a tree back with the kobolds <laughs> and might be eaten by the time <laughs> I return. All right. By the means of this spell, the caster is able to show any animal of animal intelligence to semi-intelligence that he desires friendship. If the animal does not roll a successful saving throw or spell immediately when the spell begins. It stands quietly while the caster finishes the spell, which takes an hour. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Thereafter, it follows the caster. I didn't even about. realize that. Okay. Um, the deer stands there. What is your animal friendship ritual like? Um, I think, I mean, I think I cast a spell, so I'm like muttering prayers to Martha to, I mean, this is probably all in the kobold tongue mm -hmm. and quite quietly whispered, but things along the lines of, you know, oh, mama, present your bosom to this, to this creature of life. 
that is my suckle at your okay and we and i approach the creature right sort of massaging the my my token and presenting food um i'm i assume if it's an hour casting time i can kind of can i speak during that process yeah but can I, I tell the other kobolds to fan out and scout so yeah. I, I start approaching the creature and i you know secure the perimeter mm-hmm. and approach the the three the kobolds uh, scatter far enough that they can keep an eye out, but close enough that they can still see you in the dark. You guys all have infravision, and it's nighttime. What is the couple? I didn't actually consult the... Oh, God. Oh, thank God that was empty. It's 60-foot infravision? Uh... Or is it 120? Should I pull up spells and magic? And do, do couples have any innate like hiding abilities, or is it just the attack last... Ooh, I think they do have a natural ability to hide in shadows and stuff. All right. I can I can look this up unless you're um kobolds have sixty foot infravision. Um our versions of kobolds do not have penalties uh, for bright light. Because okay. you're cannonoids, not weird lizard subterranean things. Okay. Um I think you do have some some hiding and blending in. So can you roll a saving throw for the deer? Uh, I did. It, you, you have... It, it stands and waits. Uh, okay. Yeah, it fails. Cool. Um, no, you actually don't have any... You don't have any um, hiding abilities. Yeah. Kobolds, kobolds are useless. Yeah. Okay. So eventually the spell finishes up and the deer is most certainly your friend. It comes over, leans down, nuzzles you on the cheek a little bit and turns around and starts trotting south. Excuse me, the spell says you follow me, not me follow you. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I follow the, yeah, the deer, scratching it on the chin and maybe occasionally handing get treats if I spot them, like Mm. plants that I might eat. Um, The deer leads you a few miles away. Is this a male or female deer? Does it have antlers? It does not. It is a female deer. Okay. Um, The the deer leads you further south into the foothills of the metallic hills. I would gather the other kobolds as we leave. Right. Um, It goes up the creek and stops from uh, maybe 150 feet away from the mouth of a fairly large cave entrance, uh, cold large by kobold st- standards. It's maybe six feet high for a ceiling and maybe 10 feet wide. It's this big kind of broad cave entrance out of which flows this creek. I pull whoever, whatever kobolds are near to me close and I say that. Our new cave. Okay. Whoa. Uh, Pogwick gets down on all fours and starts slowly scrambling towards the cave, going as quietly as he dares. I will. He dares. I will gesture to one of the other. Sneebel and Snogwad. Yeah, I'll gesture to Sneebel and say to follow him back up. Be careful. Okay. They're they're probably they're probably bad bats in there. Oh, bad bats! Oh, Big no. bad bats. Um, I think this is an appropriate time to introduce the kobold nomenclature for various races. Um, goblins in the kobold tongue are goblobs. Hobgoblins are hobglobs. Bugbears are big globs because they're all goblins. They're all related to each other. Mm-hmm. Knolls are the big dogs. Orcs are big pigs. Trolls are long claws. Ogres are big ones. Giants are big ones. Humans are nofers. Dwarves are rock mutts. Halflings are dirt mutts. Gnomes are good boys. And elves are big foxes. Bad bads represent whatever is the current threat in the area. Um, so if you are in an area where there's a lot of goblins around, the bad bads are goblins. If you're being, you know, 
tracked by wolves, then the wolves are the bad bads. Bad bads are your current enemy. Um, okay, let's back into a game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Pogwick and Sneeble go, you know, in uh, tactical in a tactical column up the creek towards the cave. Give them. Why don't you make, give me perception checks for Pog, uh, Pogwick and Sneeble? Um, do we know their perceptions? Are we going to assume an average of 10 or something? Or one has 10, one has 11. That make it average. Ooh, it's a okay. 26. Ooh. So <laughs> Pogwog is on point. Sneeble is too busy smelling his ass to, uh, <laughs> to notice anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so Pogwick stops. Freezing subtly as... How, how are they, like, at the cave entrance? Pogwick is maybe 30 feet from the cave entrance. Sneeble's mm-hmm. another 20 feet behind him. Uh, Pogwick stops and when you hear some scrambling from the cave. And out of it come three bad bads. Three... Uh, what are they called? Three Aliens? goblobs. So goblins. Yes. Goblobs. Goblobs. Yeah. I'll take me a little while to get used to that. It, it'll, mm. Yeah, I'll have to keep looking it up every time. All right. I think we roll for initiative. All right. It's time. Um, I'm going to let you control all of your kobolds. Oh, lordy. You can run all of them. Um, all right. Um, should I just roll a group initiative then? Uh, sure. That'll make it easier for us. Oh, 10. Ooh. Are the go- did the goblin are the goblins surprised or are they No, they spotted you guys coming. Um, mm-hmm. the big bads or the bad bads go first in this situation. Um, the first bad bad comes screaming out of the cave, brandishing a small crude spear. It's got like a flint head on a normal shaft and comes right at Pogwick with it. Um, scoring a 17 to hit. Why don't you roll Pogwick's HP? D4, right? D4, yeah. Or... Oh, God. Um, scoring a hit and skewering Pogwick with a three on the spear. Pogwick <sighs> dies in agony. Um, the second goblob, the second bad bad, comes after Sneeble with a five, and the third one comes after him with a four, both missing Sneeble. Um, your kobolds turn. Now your kobolds, well, they're, they're kobolds. They're, they're easily scared, especially when outnumbered. Um, but I'm mm-hmm. going to let you decide how they work because they do have the big mama here to, mm-hmm. to back them up. Yeah. I think... Um... Okay, so Sneeble tactically runs for his life. <laughs> so he, he, with, he withdraws. I think he probably like tries to climb. I don't know. Backs up. He was right. He was right behind Pogwick, right? He yeah. was ass sniffing. So he's not even in melee reach. Or did they? Uh, they close? they close to chase after him. Uh, but okay, so he tries to like weasel away. Um, he can withdraw and start to weasel up a um, tree or something. Big Mama probably. I, she didn't start casting a spell, so I'll just go with what I was initially intending, which is hucking a sling at one of these goblobs. All right. Hurl your sling at a goblob. Critical. Oh my Holy god. Carp. Uh, these are Brighten unarmored gob, hob, gob, gob, goblobs. Oh, is that like a triple crit? <laughs> yeah, it's a double. Yeah. So, yeah, triple damage. Triple damage. Oh goblob, my god. Goblobs, like, brain splatter everywhere. Everywhere. Just poof, the goblob cr- cr- uh, crumples to the ground. What does... Uh, uh, Snogwad, dude. Um, I think Big Mama elbows Snogwad. Go meet uh, Pogwash. <laughs> no, Pog. Snogwick. 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 I don't know. One Sneeble. of these guys. Sneeble. Pogwick's dead. <laughs> so Pogwick like scurries over to wherever Sneeble withdrawed to, withdrew to. Okay. And we'll roll initiative for the next round. Let's do it. The goblins go up five. Oh, we go first. Yes. Um, we're too thin, and these are only goblobs. Mm-hmm. So I think Big Mama um, tugs the deer 
and the big mom and the deer go towards Goblobs um, as she shouts, Charge! And hopefully the other two Goblobs jump, leap out of hiding or their retreat. Okay. Do you speak re-engage. Goblob? I do speak Goblob. Okay. Was that, did you change. steal charge in Goblob or in Kobold? No, Kobold. Okay, cool. Um, go I ahead mean, and roll me, uh, roll the hit. Um, how, have the goblins moved forward? Are they guarding Pog, whatever's body? So one of them came, skewered Pogwick. The other two mm-hmm. ran past him, tried to stab at Sneevel, but scampered away. And these guys were like regrouping, looking out into the darkness, trying to figure things out. When all of a sudden, like a, st- a sling bullet hit one of them and they crumpled. Mm-hmm. And the other two are seemingly surprised that the sling stones coming yeah. from the darkness. Okay. So I think all three slash four, if you count the deer, just descend on one of them that pursued. So Big Mama comes out brandishing a club. Uh, it's it's a quarter staff, but it's I'm using club stats because it's, I'm a small creature. I can't use a quarter staff. Beautiful. And the other um, goblobs follow my lead and leap out of tree. So Big Mama. Oh, nice. It's- Three points of damage. You destroy one of the goblobs. Um, so I think the other two, inspired by this, join, and we just sort of mob the third. I don't have an attack, but I move with them. Uh, first, Kobold oh, gets 17. It's a hit. Um, D4s, I think. Are they just... I think, yeah, they claw for D4. Okay. Nice. Three points of damage. Scratching. Second one is a miss. Yeah. Uh, the remaining goblob is freaking out. I think he... I think Big Mama is probably trying to lead the charge. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the, the biggest d- looking kobold brandishing a club. Let's see, will a deer fight for you? Um, I don't think. I think I probably could convince it too, but I don't think I am right yeah. now. The At deer... least not in this situation. It's right. kind of following behind. The deer does not join into the fray. The remaining goblob, they're only four feet tall, so they're not that much bigger mm-hmm. than you. Mm-hmm. I guess they're 30% bigger than you. Um, the remaining I goblob... Think I, in goblob, I, I... Run, goblob! This our cave now! Yeah. The goblob's not having any of this. Uh, it takes its spear, turns, and runs. You've got a quarter staff, so you can get an attack of yeah. opportunity if you just so desire. Yeah, uh, plus two goblob. for back attack, or plus one for back, plus two. two for back attack. Yeah, the goblob runs back into the cave. I whack him in the ankle oh. as he retreats for four points of damage. He you already knock took three, his feet so from out, un, out from underneath down. him, and he smashes on the ground with a faint, Ah, kobolds! To his whatever allies he might have in the cave. Um, I run over to Pog Wash. Pogwick. And check his wounds how bad is he are we giving um, kobolds negative hp <laughs> i don't think so i will give big mama uh or uh, mama beatrix negative hp but i think your your general kobolds maybe they can Just go to like negative four instead of negative 10 because four okay. hp or one to four hp with the, uh, all the way to Sugar. negative 10 seems a little crazy okay so um, I'm looking at my spells. Cure light wounds, cure moderate wounds are utterly useless. They're, they're good <laughs> I mean, for you. Are, they're overkill. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Pog is Pogwash just dead? dead? No, no, he's he's alive, but just barely. Okay, so I will throw a cure light wounds at him. All right. Pogwick as we... shakes his head as he comes uh, to... Do I roll HP or does it just bring it to him to one? It just brings him to one. Oh, then I would have just cast an Orison. Okay. Not that I'll need all of these healing. I'm really I way over to the healings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pogwick uh, comes back to consciousness. He's badly wounded and is going to need to be carried, or at least supported by good, one of you good, guys. Good thing we've got this deer, mm-hmm. this deer friend. Okay. Come, flee into the night, and we I think scurry out of there. Hopefully before any goblob reinforcements. Excellent. Uh, why don't we go? to our first break as the kobolds scurry back to their encampment after having found the col- the goblob cave and cleared mm-hmm. out its initial defenders. See you guys on the other side of our break. Bye-bye. <laughs> 